It's about time we have a real discussion about carbohydrates and dispel some of the common myths that seem to be floating around on many social media platforms without any rigorous scientific research to back their claims. What's up guys, my name is Lucas and I am the founder of Ergogenic Health and my mission is to bring you the most cutting edge health information that you'll struggle to find on Google. So please do me a favor and like this video, hit subscribe below and if you have any questions or comments, drop them down below as I do my best to respond to each and every single one. So in today's video, let's take a look at some of the common carbohydrate myths that seem to be floating around on all these different social media platforms. There seems to be a lot of confusion around carbohydrates. So what I wanna do in this video is break down some of the common myths associated with carbohydrates. So first of all, let's take a look at what is a carbohydrate or what are carbohydrates? Well, to put simply, Carbohydrates are one of the body's primary fuel sources and we can look at carbohydrates in two categories. We have simple carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates. Within the simple carbohydrates category, we have both monosaccharides and disaccharides. Now, the monosaccharides consist of glucose, fructose, and galactose, and the disaccharides consist of maltose, lactose, and sucrose. Whereas when we look at the complex carbohydrates, the polysaccharides, we're really referring to starches, fibers, um, and different for uh, storage forms of glycogen. So let's take a look at the first carbohydrate myth number one, that carbohydrates at nice are worse for your health. Now, this is a very common topic that you'll see discussed about how eating late at night can increase fat gain and things like that. But if we take a look at this particular study, which was titled Greater Weight Loss and Hormonal Changes After Six Months, diet with carbohydrates eaten mostly at dinner. Now, basically what they found was that there was greater weight loss, the abdominal circumference and body fat mass reductions were observed in the experimental diet compared to the control group. So what they noted was that there were actually different changes that occurred in terms of um, body composition parameters, despite the fact that these participants were actually consuming carbohydrates later at night. So the most important thing to take note of is at the end of the day, the bottom line is whether or not you have been in a caloric deficit or a caloric surplus. Now that is not to say that if we did an oral glucose challenge, which is a measure of your body's ability to tolerate sugar, eating carbohydrates late at night will indeed lead to poorer or worse outcomes in terms of being able to reduce that postprandial glucose spike. So let's say we eat a banana at let's say 10 o'clock at night versus if we eat a banana at say 10 a.m., our glucose spike is going to be worse in the evening um, as compared to the morning. But if we look at the end result in terms of body composition and you know abdominal fat and other parameters like that, that is not the case. It simply doesn't mean that you put on more weight. So don't think that if you eat pasta after 6 p.m., you know, it's gonna lead to increased fat gain directly. Something that I personally play around with is carbohydrate backloading, where I shift majority of my carbohydrates towards the end of the day, as that will help with other hormonal adaptations, which I'll cover shortly. Carbohydrate Hydrate myth number two, lower GI is better than high GI. Now, the GI ranking or the GI index, the glycemic index, has actually led to a lot of confusion around whether specific carbohydrate sources are healthier than others. So the glycemic index basically refers to how 
quickly your blood sugar spikes compared to regular glucose. So regular glucose is, has a rating of 100. And basically the GI index refers to how rapidly the particular food item will spike your blood sugars. So what's tricky about this and what's really confusing is that to put as an example, a Snickers bar, which you can see in this diagram, a Snickers bar has a GI rating of 55. Whereas if we look at, let's say one cup of brown rice, that also has a GI rating of about 55. Now, does that mean that a Snickers bar is equally as healthy as a cup of brown rice? Definitely not. The reason being is that the Snickers bar contains nuts, which obviously contain fats, which will delay the absorption of the glucose into the bloodstream. So you can see different GI ratings here. So one slice of wholemeal bread is as a GI score of 70. Two cups of popcorn is 72. One baked potato is 85. One cup of plain rice cake is 89. And a medium banana is 52. So you can see different GI rankings there. So the most important thing here is to not look at the GI index in isolation. What we need to do is look at the actual, the nutrient composition of the particular food group and whether or not it has other compounds or antioxidants and things like that, that can actually, you know, reduce the, the burden of that glucose. So although the GI ranking can be useful in certain situations, ultimately lower GI doesn't always mean it's better than a high GI food. Carbohydrate myth number three, carbohydrates increase cortisol. Now this is completely false. Um, carbohydrates can actually help to lower cortisol. And you can see this in this particular study, increasing dietary carbohydrate as part of a healthy whole food diet intervention dampens eight week changes in salivary cortisol and cortisol responsiveness. So this actually goes back to a lot of uh, Dr. Ray Pete's work where he talks about you know, fueling the body with sufficient amounts of carbohydrates can actually dampen the stress response. And this is true. And this is perhaps one of the reasons why a lot of people like myself and Dr. Andrew Huberman prefer to backload their carbohydrates because in general, when we have the carbohydrates, it can actually dampen the cortisol response and help to actually reduce cortisol, which sort of makes sense why a lot of people like to have their carbohydrates later in the evening or they have sweet cravings in the evenings. Carbohydrate myth number four, we have fruit is unhealthy. So the blanket term, when people say that fruit is unhealthy, this is entirely not the case. Now we need to take a look at, obviously different population groups are gonna respond differently to certain foods. So type two diabetics may not respond very well to fruit, but let's take a look at fruit itself. Now, what we need to factor in is that fructose is not the same as high fructose corn syrup. Fructose, although it does have some deleterious effects on health when consumed in high amounts, high fructose corn syrup has a much more damaging effect on the body and can spike inflammation and inflammatory markers much more readily and quickly than pure fructose. So that's something to take note of. Now, we also need to remind ourselves that fruit actually contains polyphenols. So these polyphenols actually possess, you know, anti-aging uh, effects, anti-inflammatory properties. They can improve endothelial or blood flow. These polyphenols can modulate the microbiome. So by modulating the microbiome, they can alter our response to glucose. In addition, fruit also contains fiber and fiber obviously will help to slow glucose release from the small intestine into the bloodstream. So fiber can actually help to blunt the glucose spike. And then fruit also contains antioxidants, which can directly change the way that your body responds to carbohydrates. Now, certain antioxidants actually have insulin sensitizing effects. A good example would be luteolin or fisetin in strawberries or pterostilbene in blueberries, or even looking at some other ones like resveratrol in grapes. These particular antioxidants and polyphenols can alter the body, alter the way the body responds to uh, carbohydrates. Now, one other point to note is that fructose does not directly stimulate insulin release. Fructose is actually processed a little bit differently by the body. It's actually processed by the liver. And another point to note 
where fruits often get you know bashed or or blamed is that certain fruits can actually be very functional and certain functional fruits like kiwi fruit and pineapples can actually help to increase melatonin production and actually help to stimulate sleep onset and improve sleep quality in healthy adults. So we can use fruit to our advantage in that sort of situation. Carbohydrate myth number five, sports drinks are healthy. Now, my stance on sports drinks is that they should only be used within specific parameters and also where glycogen depletion has taken place. Or for example, during a high competition or very competitive environment where the athlete really requires you know, steady, a steady supply of glucose. However, for the general population, if they're sort of sitting at their desk or maybe they go to the gym just once a day or something, the use of sports drinks is, is pretty much useless. And you can sort of see the sugar content. And we're comparing soda to a sports drink. You can see that there's about 34 grams of sugar in a typical sports drink. And obviously soda has a lot more looking at about 65 grams of sugar. So basically what we need to factor in as well is that sports drinks do contain a large amount of potassium. Now, potassium is beneficial to help with insulin sensitivity and helping with glucose uptake. You can see that there was one particular study that showed that mild to moderate potassium depletion actually caused a decrease in glucose tolerance associated with impaired insulin secretion. So long story short, sports drinks are not healthy for the majority of the population unless they're actually using it to, you know, improve sports performance or they're using it to refuel and you know replenish glu uh, glucose or glycogen stores that have just been lost to help them with training you know, you know within the next 12 hours so hopefully you guys learned something new in this video if you like the video please do drop a comment down below subscribe to my channel i look forward to seeing you in the next video